Hi, welcome back to my ESG channel. Before entering into a new chapter, again, would you please have a look to see how many of these key concepts that we encountered last time you can remember. This chapter is about stewardship, which appears to be one of the most difficult concepts to be understood in this course. When I talk to many people, it seems that many do associate stewardship with stewards and stewardesses, whom we now call flight attendants, say like this lady on board a flight of uh, Vietnam Airlines. In the context of this course, I will say that stewardship is an obligation on investors to take a much more active role in influencing a company even though most investors are not involved in the day-to-day -day running of the company in order to enhance or at least preserve the value of the financial interests in the company owned by the investors. To a certain extent, this means investors should look after the investing companies as if they are uh, their own businesses, even though, well, this will still be different from what is done by the company's executives or controlling shareholders. This like the stewards and stewardesses look after passengers' well-being in a flight. So let's begin. Right, so this is chapter 6. Now here the Don Yao comes and we'll go through each of them. Right, the first one is to explain the purpose of investor engagement and stewardship and we have just talked about what stewardship is so uh, again well stewardship is the approach that investors take as active and involved owners of the companies and other entities in which they invest through voting and engagement well you've probably heard about activism and activism is typically a specialist form of engagement and stewardship but then well uh, in most cases uh, engagement and stewardship uh, take other forms and as I've just mentioned at the beginning well this kind of uh, active and involved role um, is regarded as the obligation of the investors even though the investors are not running the business of investees on a day-to-day -day basis and the purpose of stewardship is to make sure that the value of assets is enhanced over time or at least does not deteriorate through neglect or mismanagement via a process of intervention. So pretty much where voting and engagement uh, are part of the process of intervention. And finally, stewardship is an aspect of the delivery of fiduciary duty. Engagement. The purpose of engagement is the way in which investors push to effect their stewardship responsibilities in line with the principles of responsible investment, that's PRI principle 2, which says we will be the active owners and incorporate environmental, social, governance issues into our uh, ownership policies and practices. So the sentence actually was very similar to what, what, what we've just seen uh, under stewardship. And engagement is considered a purposeful dialogue with a, with a specific objective. It also refers to the individual interventions in specific access to preserve and or enhance value. And voting is a particular form of engagement. Engagement can encompass the full range of issues that affect the long-term value of a business and ESG factors are integral to those. And well, these issues include strategy, capital structure, operational performance and delivery, risk management, pay, and correct governance. So with pretty much uh, all major issues, they will be of concern to an investor. Okay, what are the benefits of engagement? There are a few. Firstly, uh, it helps the investing company to understand their investors' expectations, allowing them to shape their long-term strategies. And for investors, Via engagement, they can work closely with the investee over time on specific ESG issues. 
and there's also a growing body of evidence that engagement adds value to portfolios. Moreover, one of the studies found that successful, successful engagement activity was followed by positive and double financial returns. And then another study also found that ESG engagement leads to a reduction in downside risk. Although well, we need to uh, remember that normally the success of engagement is measured by how pre-agreed objectives are delivered, while evidence of financial stock price or performance is secondary. So it means that well, uh, for all engagement activities, um, it's probably hard to uh, state very explicitly the observable financial outcomes arise from those activities. So more importantly, um, the success of engagement will depend on whether uh, certain pre-agreed objectives have been uh, made or satisfied. But then there are also criticisms of, of engagement. One of them is that um, engagement may be considered an excuse to hold on a, a company that is not performing well, where uh, it's possible that even with engagement, uh, one cannot expect uh, a lot of change in the company. And then another criticism of engagement is that um, investors or, or, or a fund manager may only uh, uh, get engaged with a company after, say, a big stock price movement, so it's, it's probably kind of uh, something to do after well, this stock price uh, adverse movement and call it knee jerk engagement and this kind of uh, so called knee case engagement rather than a long term approach may not be that effective. Okay, well, this is a, a, a busy slide and there is a investor body called uh, the Investor Forum. Well, we've just talked about the benefits of institution uh, engagement, but then, well, there should be certain uh, requirements or criteria that should be met in order for such a uh, dealership or engagement effort to be successful. So, in terms of dialogue, there are a few things. Uh, Say a dialogue that is considered successful will be say uh, active discussion between companies and investors. Uh, the dialogue must be consistent, direct, and honest. It's respectful and seeks to rebuild mutual trust. Uh, delivered professionally, in the context of full understanding of individual company. It's to make efficient use of resources, including time. And for dialogue, there are two principal forms, including monitoring and engagement, which we are going to see in the two boxes below. So monitoring is a dialogue for investment purposes to understand the company's stakeholders and performance. Um, involves detailed and specific questioning, investors seek insights, involves incremental buy, sell, hold decisions. Engagement is a bit different from monitoring. It's a purposeful dialogue with a specific and targeted objective to achieve change. It's a two-way dialogue compared to monitoring, which is uh, pretty much a, a, a kind of fact-finding by investors. But then engagement is a two-way one, where investors are expressing opinions. Engagement can be individual or collective. Individual means where each investor will approach a company separately, but then collective, they will mean that well, Investor with a certain common objective uh, may want to do engagement together. And then, well, um, in order to ensure success of uh, engagement or stewardship activity, well, look at the green box, there are still a few things that we need to remember. Um, the effort will need to be set in the appropriate context of long term ownership and has a focus on long term value preservation and creation. The activity has to be framed by a close understanding of the nature of the company and the drivers of this business model and long-term opportunity to prosper. It should recognize that change that process and should not be uh, inappropriately rushed. So I'll, I'll say that well, um, a successful engagement will need to have a good understanding 
uh, of the company uh, circumstances and should not be uh, as mentioned uh, change the process and cannot should be uh, inappropriately rushed but we can't expect well, for some uh, big change um, after a, a enga engagement or still share activity and then well apart from investors forum uh, the PRI has also stated three engagement dynamics they believe to create value to a certain extent they come similar to what you've seen uh, for those proposed by investors forum well, these dynamics include communicative dynamics which is the exchange of information learning dynamics uh, for enhancing knowledge and political dynamics uh, for building relationships right the third learning outcome so this are this, uh, pretty much well uh, a few say laws and codes that uh, require investors uh, to perform stewardship or engagement activities so the first one is actually the UK Walker Review well it's not a law or regulation but then it's the background of the UK Stewardship Code uh, Walker Review uh, was actually performed after the global financial crisis after well, the enormous stress and, and even bankruptcy uh, of uh, global and also uh, a few uh, major UK financial institutions including say uh, Northern Rock uh, exports and Royal Bank of Scotland so the Walker Review uh, was published in 2009 uh, which is a review of corporate governance in UK banks and other financial industry entities and the review formally called for the issuance of a stewardship code that is a 2010 stewardship code which was revised uh, three years ago in 2020 to provide a framework for shareholder engagement Right, this is a UK stewardship code and has got uh, seven principles that require institutional investors to firstly publicly disclose their policy on how they will discharge their stewardship responsibilities. The investors will also need to have a robust policy on managing conflicts of interest in relation to stewardship and this policy should be publicly disclosed. Well, this conflict of interest um, it's quite peculiar to uh, the UK code because well, other countries have adopted similar codes but then uh, the emphasis on managing corporate interests is kind of uh, peculiar to the UK code the institutional investors also need to monitor their investing companies establish clear guidelines on when and how they will escalate their activities as a method of protecting and enhancing shareholder value the investors will need to be willing to act collectively with other investors where appropriate have a clear policy on voting and disclosure of voting activity and report periodically on the stewardship and voting activities the code was revised in 2020 and investors after revisions of the code are now required to report annually on activity and most importantly on outcome from their activity and more importantly for outcomes investors must state examples so they can't just well uh, uh, state policy statements and by doing so they will not meet requirements so investors must demonstrate uh, examples that they have uh, done anything on, on the on the stewardship activities And I've just said the UK stewardship has been followed around the world. Like the ICGN Global Stewardship Principles, ICGN is an international corporate governance network. And hopefully, you remember that we came across this term in Chapter 5. Europe has also got this uh, EFEMA, European Fund and Asset Management Association Stewardship Code. And it's like to supersede by this uh, SLD2 Children's Right Directive. And for all these codes, there are generally uh, common provisions like say, the requirement to regularly monitor investing companies, uh, active engagement, escalation where relevant, and thoughtfully intelligent voting. 
but then they are also a provision that may not be universally adopted just, uh, just like well, the provision on managing conflict interest as you just said it appears in the UK code but not in all codes of around the world and requirement to uh, escalate leadership activity to include a willingness to act collectively with other institutional investors well um, it's because well um, in our country there may be restrictions on well different investors acting together or acting in concert so that's why uh, this kind of uh, provision may not appear in the course of other countries and finally the US Employee and Retired Income Security Act or as we call ERISA which says that advisors including funding managers in the US should act as fiduciaries in relation to the beneficiaries for example called at investing company AGMs and engage with companies So the outcome number four um, explain how engagement is achieved in practice Well there are number of invest engagement styles but well, the first one is uh, directly or indirectly directly will be of course well the company uh, or I mean the investor uh, does the engagement activity by itself but then more commonly will be via like a sales fund managers uh, service providers including say if you talk about just voting policy voting firms there are also uh, stewardship stewardship service providers who will aggregate the interests of clients to achieve scale there are also industry initiatives and co collaboration platforms for collaborative engagement there are also top down and bottom up styles well this is a bit confusing because well uh, top down and bottom up is not talking about uh, how you do engagement or say say top say uh, according to the, the corporate hierarchy but then top down bottom up is actually well, kind of like uh, investor analysis so if you start from the micro environment then it's a top down approach but then if you start from the company or are in those secret issues then we put them on approach it's not talking about how you uh, perform the activity uh, according to the corporate hierarchy so top down will include say like uh, environmental and social issues and engagement will be organized by sector and engagement tends to start with investor relations or sustainability teams and then be escalated upwards so in this context it's a top down approach but then in terms of uh, how that's implemented it is kind of like a, a bottom up approach and then uh, in this context the bottom up approach is really, uh, really uh, on governance issues or voting issues that are company specific and engagement for the bottom up approach is often organized by geography because such issues are often defined by natural laws and codes and this approach tends to focus on individual companies and how this implemented well is normally um, in terms of implementation is on a top-down basis that is from board chair or chair or board committees like say, remuneration audit often the assistance of, of company secretary right there are also issue based and company based styles issue based are open for passive investors or those with broadly diversified portfolios and that seeks to engage with all companies impacted by that issue and it's often started with a letter to all impacted companies and then followed up by a dialogue so the company base is open for active investors who actually want some uh, major change that can be seen from the company by kind of well uh, putting pressure on the company that we started with the company with a tailored engagement approach with direct discussion with senior management and then the board and the companies that may be involved are often those identified as underperformers or ones that trigger other financial or ESG metrics okay these are well um, a lot of issues on, on establishing an engagement approach so uh, broadly speaking well according to the investor forum um, there are two types individual engagement or collaborative engagement so for an individual engagement that involves say generic letter tailored letter generic letter 
pretty much means that well, a similar letter on the same issue is sent to uh, multiple investing companies. When I tell you that, there will be one that is tailored to individual companies. Housekeeping engagement, that's a kind of an annual regular dialogue with the company, uh, active private engagement, active public engagement. Collaborative engagement, that means uh, working together with uh, other investors. Uh, they will involve, say, informal discussions, collaborative campaigns, follow on dialogue, soliciting support, group meetings, collective engagement, and concert party. So, for individual engagement, for them, for that to succeed, there are certain factors like uh, the engagement will need to have specific targeted objectives, uh, strategic or governance lab objectives, and a bespoke approach that is a kind of a tailor made approach to each company. Although, of course, well, um, it is possible that model companies will, uh, will be kind of hit by the same issue. But then, well, we probably still need certain uh, customization when we deal with individual companies. Collaborative engagement success factors are uh, clear leadership of particip participants, minimal collision, <coughs> meaningful collision. So, say scale, say if um, the scale is big enough, say, doubt, say the whole thing is big enough, then it yeah, mean a, a, a bigger chance of success. A prior relationship or cultural awareness of the target company. A goal setting. Um, the main issue is to consider uh, resources because resources are always uh, limited. So, in order to consider resources, the investors will need to define the scope and prioritize and frame the engagement topic. In the broader discussion around strategy and long term financial performance, uh, a key process to, to articulate, articulate realistic goals and milestones and adopt it to local context, language, and cultural approaches and need uh, clear escalation measures if that is required. We also need to set priorities. For example, we, we, we first look at the bigger companies or look at the most material issues. And other than individual engagement, uh, investors may also consider external collective vehicles or investor groups. And finally, we need to uh, manage conflict interests for some of them, maybe business or, per business or personal relationships with investing companies. Setting an objective is the first key step in engagement. And because as we mentioned a few slides before, uh, engagement outcomes may be difficult to quantify. So having some mechanism to test whether the objectives have been achieved is the best way to evidence success. And they also help you know, identify the right company representative to work with, like say sustainability or IO teams or ESG operational methods, or CEO or CFO for business strategy or operational methods. Escalation. Um, the former UK Stewardship Code has defined several uh, ways to escalate, including say, holding digital meetings, expressing concerns, meeting, uh, uh, say, the chairman of the board, interviewing the others, make a public statement, submitting resolutions and speak, or request a general meeting. Others may, may include, say, writing formal letter. Seeking dialogue with other stakeholders, formally request a special audit, take concerns public, seek governance improvement and damage to litigation, ask for legal remedies or arbitration, and formally add a company to exclusion list or other exit and threaten exit from the investment. Well, collective engagement. Um, well, we've talked about the two approaches, individual and collective. Um, arguably, collective engagement can be seen as the most resource efficient method by putting resources of different investors, although, of course, the challenge will be uh, the need to maintain consistent perspective across different investors. And we actually touched 
upon this a bit earlier, in doing collective engagement, uh, one needs to be mindful of the rules around any competitive behavior. So the investor firm has a detailed collective engagement framework through which engagement will not fall far of such rules. We note there are notable uh, ESG investor coalitions in Group Climate Action 100 plus or CA 100 plus that targets the most polluting companies. The PRI has all its own service called Collaboration Forum. There are also commercial approaches like overlay service providers predominantly offered by fund managers. Voting. Um, they are also called proxy voting because well, investors will, will normally vote via proxy instead of actually going to the AGM to vote. But then, well, uh, although most investors will not go to AGM, actually, well, attendance of AGMs in person can give investors direct access to company directors with much scope for in informal dialogue. A proxy voting is often advised by proxy advisors, and the biggest one is ISSS, and then the second biggest one is Class Lewis. Proxy voting is a key tool for the active investor to influence on key issues like finance or capital structure, board membership, audit, and remuneration. So it's actually a very powerful tool. Although, well, as we mentioned a bit earlier, uh, voting or proxy voting is only uh, one of the, the, the engagement types. Well, number six, describe approach to engagement across a range of asset classes. Well, uh, without doubt, um, it's quite evident that dealership codes tend to focus heavily on publicly traded equities. So how about the other asset classes, like corporate fixed income, say like corporate bonds? Um, well, ESG factors where they can impact credit ratings and affect spread, so um, yes, she will indeed affect uh, 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 investments, and of course, in some maybe uh, extreme cases, yes, she can affect the default probability of fixed income securities. And PLI has recommended that corporate fixed income investors should prioritize engagement based on certain things like size of holding, uh, low quality quality issuers, key themes and issues low ESG scores. I note that it is easier to push for ESG rated condition in disclosures while pre issuance And there's probably more scope for influence where the investors engage alongside equity investors. Although well some cases like say if a company is supporting solvency, the two types may be direct rivals. And then sovereign debt like copper bonds but it's actually very hard to uh, have meaningful stewardship interaction. Private equity. Well, although limited partner is actually the, the actual investor, but then normally well, any engagement will be undertaken by the general partner. Infrastructure. There, of course, were ESG issues and, and scope for engagement, and then well, we know that for ESG issues for infrastructure. They may be may extend well beyond those specific to an asset. And engagement will normally be via special managers and probably uh, less by the, the investors themselves. Uh, property engagement will be via the property managers. And investors should require managers to report on the frameworks and metrics that they use to monitor holdings. Fund investments. But it's obvious that um, Investors are distant from the other data assets, but then um, investors should also hold their managers accountable, accountable for stewardship effort. Although in any case, the agency gap may be harder to close. Uh, 